All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and get on to our homework. Um, so for today's lesson on classifying conic sections, we are gonna first work on um, completing the square and then being able to identify the center or the vertex um, based on what how we classify our conic. Um, then we're gonna go ahead and work on um, classifying the conic sections without completing the square, and that's gonna be from our notes as far as comparing the um, A and B and using multiplication. And then we'll go ahead and work into the multiple choice. So just doing the same kind of thing, but a little bit with multiple choice and not being able to show our as much work as we need to. So the first one is let's just practice completing the square because that is one thing that, um, you know, what we have in these case is we have our conics that are in general form. And what we want to do is we want to put them in standard form. So therefore we can identify the center and the vertex rather simply as well as all the other pieces of information that we will be needing to know later on in this uh, chapter. So the first thing is when we have something in general form and we want to write it in standard form, the first thing we're going to do is, oops, that was supposed to be, one of these is supposed to be a Y. I'm assuming this is a Y. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is group the X's and the Y's together, and then also get your constant to the other side. So therefore, I will write this as a X squared plus four X plus Y squared plus two Y equals six, okay? Now, in this first example, um, we could go ahead and complete the square um, by using b divided by 2 squared. And remember to add that inside of your parentheses. So basically what we can do here is we can group our x's and we can group our y's. Now basically what we want to do is find the value that creates a perfect square trinomial. Um, hopefully, you guys recognize that obviously these are perfect square trinomials that we've already done. And if you've already done the work, then you kind of already know what the answer is going to be. I'm actually gonna use some different colors here just to make sure we're all on the same page. So that's gonna be a four X plus four. Let's go back to red. And then this would be a Y squared plus two Y plus one. Okay, and again, where, oops, let's put that in blue. Again, where are these numbers coming from? I'm just taking my middle term um, and B, so in this case, four, four divided by two is two, two squared is four. Two divided by two is one, one squared is one. So you can see where that comes from, but don't forget whenever we add them to the left-hand side, we also have to subtract them on the right-hand side. So if I added a four, now I need to also, sorry, I need to add a four to the right side and I need to add a one to the right side. So you either add the same number to the left and right or you add and subtract on the same side. That's a lot of times in quadratics, that's what we did. Um, or when we were solving, sometimes we do it that way as well. But in this case, we're going to, um, looking at the standard form for a, an ellipse, we're just going to add that value C that completes the square on both sides. All right, so now I have two perfect square trinomials that can be factored down, right, easily to binomial squared. So I have X plus two, quantity squared, and then Y plus one, quantity squared, and therefore, this is going to be 10 equals 11. Now, again, if we want to, I just said complete the square. Um, now, technically, we should be able to, again, divide everything by 11 if you look at the standard form. So you have an x plus y quantity squared. Actually, I'm not sure if we went over that, did we? I don't think we did. Actually, yeah, we did. So if we want to put this in our standard form, we'll divide everything by 11. And therefore I have x plus two quantity squared over 11 plus a y plus one quantity squared over 11 equals one. Now again, it's not in the, um, I just said to complete the square, but I'm just putting it in standard form just to kind of get a little bit used to it. I should probably add, update those directions. Um, but hopefully you guys see that now, since they have the same denominator, or basically this is in the form of a circle. Um, actually, we could just leave that there. So therefore, you don't really need to put in that case, but you can see that this is a circle because A and B are exactly the same or the radius is going to be square root of 11 and it has a center of negative two, negative one. Okay, so there is, so the first answer is a circle with a center negative two, negative one. Now for the rest of these, we'll just kind of move through a little bit quicker. Um, so therefore, at least as far as the completing the square, because hopefully we've covered that plenty of times by now. All right, so first thing is group our X's. So we have an X squared plus six X. In this case, we have a negative two Y. Um, negative two Y squared plus four Y equals five. 
All right, now we're gonna go ahead and complete the square. And again, notice I have this negative two in front, so I need to make sure that I factor that out. So in this case, um, let's see here. In this case, I have a x squared plus six x plus nine, right? And just remember, if you're gonna add nine here, you're gonna have to subtract that. Um, here, I'm gonna factor out a two, so I have a y squared plus, oops, not a plus, that's gonna turn into a negative two y. All right, now again, let's complete the square here. Negative two divided by two is negative one. Negative one squared is a positive one. But remember that one is being multiplied by negative two. So on this right-hand side, I added a nine, so I need to add this nine. I added a one, so I need to add this one. But then again, remember that one is being multiplied by negative two. So you just gotta make sure that for your like accounting reasons that you're just keeping everything set. Like you add the five, add the nine, add the nine, add the one, add the one. But that one is being multiplied by negative two. Now, in this case, um, we can factor this down. So this is an x plus three quantity squared minus two times a y minus one. And again, I'm just factoring. Um, this case, let's see, that's going to be a equals what, 12? So that's going to be 14 minus two, so that'd be 12. Then, um, now you can see that this is not a circle, right? Because now you, they, the coefficients of each of my terms are not one. So when I divide by 12 here, I'll have, in standard form, x plus three quantity squared over 12 minus two over 12 can be written as one over six. So y minus one quantity squared over six equals one. Now you guys can see that this is a hyperbola um, with a center of negative three, one. So it's a hyperbola with a center Three, one. Okay, so just remember it's the opposite H and K. Um, all right, for the next one, um, this is supposed to equal zero. Jeez, I am not sure if I was in a rush or what. <laughs> um, all right, so in this case, uh, this one is going to equal zero. Now, in this when we're in this case, since we only have one y squared, hopefully you kind of already recognize this is a parabola. But to write our standard form, we actually want the x and the y's on opposite sides. So since I have my y squared here, I'm going to leave that on the left-hand side, or y squared, yeah. And then to the right-hand side, I'm going to subtract the x and subtract the four, okay? Now, um, I'm gonna wanna complete the square here, so I'm gonna factor out the negative three. So that'd be y squared plus two y equals a negative x minus four. Then I need to take my b divided by two squared. Hopefully you recognize that's gonna be a plus one. But again, be careful because you're not really adding a one to that side. You're adding a one that's being multiplied by a negative three. So it's going to be a plus a one times a negative three. Um, so in this case, I have a negative three to a y plus one quantity squared equals a negative x, um, negative three, let's see, that's going to be minus a seven. So now looking at our form, we recognize this is not in standard form. So to write this in standard form, we need to get rid of the coefficient of our y squared. We have that four p, if you remember from the parabola, is on the right-hand side for our linear term. So when I divide by negative three, and I'm kind of running out of low real estate here, so I'm just gonna kind of go horizontally, I'm gonna have y plus one quantity squared, divide a negative three into both of these, I'm going to get a one-third x plus a seven-thirds which I can go ahead and rewrite. I can factor out that one third. So therefore I'd have a y plus one quantity squared equals a one third times x plus seven. Now I know it doesn't look very nice, but again, just remember we recognize that there's only one square term. So again, our point here was to parabola. I classify it, which it is a parabola. And then also to write the vertex. Well, obviously it doesn't have a center. It has a vertex, right? And that is again going to be corresponding with your um, h and your k. So I'm going to have a vertex at negative seven, negative one, okay? Um, for the next example, in this case, um, again, we see that we have coefficients for both of our terms. So therefore, we're gonna organize everything. I got a little bit short on the space, so I'm just going to try to factor everything out as best I can. So I have a two x squared plus two x mm, plus four, 
So you have plus a 4y squared plus 8y is equal to a 18. Um, so in this case, let's go ahead and let's factor out a 2. So I have a x squared plus x. I don't want to do a fraction. That has to be... Let's do a 4x. So it'd be a 2x. Um, and then here you factor out a 4, so that'd be a 4y squared plus a 2y, and then equals an 18. So let's see what that gives us. So that would be a, um, that'd be a 1 plus, so a plus 2, so it'd have a 2 times a x plus 2x, x squared, plus 1, so that'd be a plus 2. And then over here, we'd have a 4 times a y squared plus 2y plus 1. But then that's going to be a plus 4, so that'd be a plus 4 over there. Okay, and that'd be a 24. Then in this case, we can now go ahead and complete the square. So this is going to be a 2 times a x plus 1 squared plus a 4 times a y plus 1 quantity squared equals 24. However, if you were to go ahead and divide everything by 24, you would have a x plus 1 quantity squared over, let's see, 12 plus a y plus 1 quantity squared over 6 equals 1. So sorry about that, kind of running out of real estate here. And again, guys, you can see that this is going to be an ellipse with a center at negative one, negative one. Whew. Okay, um, hopefully that was helpful um, for you guys. Now let's go and get into the easier ones. But again, really the main purpose of this, guys, was to focus on completing the square um, to be able to write it into standard form from our general form. Now let's kind of get into, let's wrap everything up here. So the next one is really just understanding the conic based on the general form without needing to find that um, the the standard form. So we're not going to complete the square here. All we're really going to do is look at our a and our b. So if you remember, we have ax squared plus b um, y squared plus c x plus d y equals zero or plus e plus e equals zero. Okay, so all of these equations are in this format. Um, and basically from there, we can identify the conic just by looking at our a and our b. So remember that the rules is if a times b is greater than zero, then it has to be an ellipse. So look at here. Here's our one ellipse. a times b was larger than zero. Well, look what happens when we have here. 3 times 5 is equal to 15, which is greater than zero. So therefore, this is an ellipse. The next one. Um, in this case, we have a is equal to b. Right? And again, because that's going to give me, there's no like horizontal or vertical stretch or compression. Your A and your B are exactly the same. Now let's go and look at our circle that we had in this case. You can see my A was 1 and my B was 1. So when we have A is equal to B, that means we have a circle. So we have 5 is equal to 5. Circle. The next one, uh, we recognize that here my A is 4 and my B is a negative 1. So when I have a A, let's do this. A times a B, and that is going to be less than zero, then let's see what that produces. So where's my example here? Here's another one. I have A is one, B is negative two. And what did this end up being? It ended up being a hyperbola. So remember your rules when A times B is less than zero, four times negative one is obviously equal to negative four, which is less than zero. So therefore this is a hyperbola. And the last one here, um, you can see that there's no y squared, right? So if there's no y squared, that means the coefficient has to be zero. So in this case, we have one fourth times zero, which is equal to zero. Or when a times b is equal to zero, it is a parabola. All right? And let's go back and look at our homework, make sure that is correct. And you can see, yeah, here there was no x squared, right? Um, so when I multiply them, I get a parabola. Um, Okay, so now let's just do the multiple choice here. So if I had the center of the ellipse, um, uh, 
So again, guys, to find the center of the ellipse, we're gonna have to complete the square. So let's go ahead and factor everything out. So I have a two x squared plus eight x plus a four y squared plus 18 y minus 10 equals zero. So I can factor out a two x squared plus four x. Here I'm going to need to factor out a four. I don't see, factor out a four. Um, so therefore that'd give me a y squared plus, let's see, that's gonna be a nine halves. Why? So if I did nine halves divided by two, which is nine fourths, and then if I square that, so nine halves squared would be a 81 over 16. I am not seeing how that would be. So therefore, um, that's going to give me a 81 over 16, right? Now, obviously, you can see that that's not gonna work. None of these would be, like if you were to write this, so you'd have a two times a x squared plus four x, right, plus four. So that would factor into two times x, um, let's say plus two. So therefore, negative two, that would work. So it could be this answer, right? It could be. But the problem is when you look at the y, you're never gonna get a perfect square trinomial with a negative three. That would mean that would need to be, um, if, this was, if this was the answer, you would have a perfect square trinomial as x plus three quantity squared, which would be x squared plus six x plus nine. That is not going, we're not going to produce x squared plus six x plus nine from there. So the answer here is E. So just recognizing by starting to complete the square, we would have fractions. We can recognize that would be a none of the above. The next one is without completing the square, identify the graph of the equation. So again, um, guys, whenever you have a, a, a coefficient for your y squared is going to be negative, we know that the product of a times b is going to be less than zero. So therefore, this is a hyperbola. The next one, find the center and the radius. Um, so again, remember guys, just the general form, it's x minus h. h is always with x plus y minus k. Now again, this one's a little confusing because you have x, y plus six. Well, remember y minus a negative k, right? So if k is negative, then that's the same thing as y plus k. So you're still subtracting k, but if k is negative, it's gonna show it as a positive. So my center in this case is going to be a five, negative six. So it's not that one and not that one. So it's either these two options. No, sorry. Five, negative six. It could be that one. It's not this one. Okay, so it's these two options, right? And now we just need to remember, well, what is the square root of 50, right? Remember the general form is r squared. So that means r squared is equal to 50. So r equals the square root of 50 which is equal to the square root of 25 times two, which is equal to five square root of two. So therefore you can see A is the answer for that one. And then last but not least guys, is identifying the vertex um, again. So we're going to want to complete the square here. So again, remember for these problems, um, when you only have a y, square or a y or an x squared, then just go ahead and organize everything. So that's a y squared um, plus six y. and then we'll add the 4x to the other side and then minus a 29. Hopefully you recognize the completing the square here, so it'd be a y squared plus 6y plus nine equals a 4x minus 29 plus nine. So we'll do a um, y plus three. So again, we know that the y coordinate needs to be a negative three, right? Now I could stop right now and just say that has to be my answer, right? Um, because that's the only one where the y coordinate of the vertex is negative three. But let's just kind of continue going on and just make sure that we are going to be uh, correct here. Um, in this case, then I have a four X and negative 29 plus nine is going to be a minus 20. And if I was to factor out that four, I'd have an X minus five and you could see that would give you a positive five. So negative, oops, sorry. So you can see that again, remember H is always with X, Y is always with K, do not make that mistake. You can see we have five comma negative three. And that ladies and gentlemen is our vertex, which our answer B. So there you go um, for your homework. I hope you enjoyed and um, let's get on to our next chapter. Cheers.